You're listening to The Yaron Brooks Show. All right, we're talking Charlottesville and alt-right and alt-left and everything that has to do with that. And now it's going to affect your life if this spreads across America. We're already seeing repeated, repeated fights between the alt-left and alt-rights in the streets of Portland, Oregon. This has become a regular featured thing. The, the, the alt-right marches, the alt-left shows up, they start fighting. The police, to a large extent, leave them alone. Um, Portland's a pretty small place. It's, it's, it's not pleasant to be in the streets of Portland on the weekend. Uh, not to mention the stabbing that I mentioned at the beginning of the show uh, where a alt-right racist uh, stabbed three men who were trying to uh, protect a couple of girls who he was, being, who he was harassing with uh, anti-Muslim and anti-minority um, you know, slurs. And all, they, all these guys did was step in and say, hey, cool it, guy. You can't be harassing these girls. Pulled out a knife, stabbed them. Two of them died. That was in Portland, Portland, Oregon. Uh, Portland, it turns out, has been a haven for white supremacists uh, since the early part of the 20th century. So it's, it's, it, Portland is classic because it's nutty left and the nutty right has a real presence there. All right, if you want to end on the conversation, it's 888-900-3393, 888-900-3393. And if you don't believe that, uh, that they are racists in this country, Check out my uh, my YouTube feed right now because they're there. They're there. You know, I've been called by somebody. I've been called a nigger. Are you allowed to say that word on, on radio? I don't know. Um, anyway, the N-word, I've been called. And then and then I get I get things like uh, the South shall rise again, a clear uh, indication. Abraham Lincoln didn't believe in racial equality. He wanted blacks to go to Africa. So the racists are, in four, are there. Uh, they're advocating for their version of collectivistic hatred uh, and for their anti-American uh, garbage. And, um, you know, just, just in case uh, you, you want to see it, you can go to uh, YouTube and search your own book. By the way, you should all be, uh, you should all, uh, what do you call it, subscribe to my YouTube channel. Subscribe to my YouTube channel. You can also follow me on uh, Facebook, it's Y Brook, Y B R O O K, and on Twitter, Yaron Brook, Y A R O N B R O O K. So follow me on Twitter, like me on Facebook, and subscribe to my YouTube channel. You can also get this and a bunch of other things that I do as a podcast by going to your favorite podcast app and putting my name in and downloading. It'll download automatically, and you can follow much of what I do and much of what I say through that. Uh, so I encourage you to all do that. So let's let's talk about what our political leaders said. So, so President Trump had a, a live press, a, a kind of a live uh, presentation yesterday, and he said stuff about condemning the hatred and we all need to come together. And uh, he talked about the hatred on many sides. Right. Now, it is true there is hatred on many sides, but it is also true that a, um, a alt-right person just killed Somebody, supposedly from the other side, I don't know what this woman uh, was about, and injured, who knows how badly, 19 other people. You don't just come out and say on many sides. You want to include as one of the sides the Antifa or whatever the ultra-left version is? Fine. But name names. Condemn the ideology of both left and right. Condemn white supremacy. You remember how long it took the candidate Trump to distance himself from David Duke. David Duke, the KKK. This should be an easy one, Mr. President. A really, really easy one. You should be anti-KKK. You should condemn them to hell. So Trump is not. Trump is not leading on this issue. He tweeted today, we must rem remember this truth. No matter our color, creed, religion, or political party, we are all Americans first. What the hell does that mean? What does being America first mean? The slogans. I guess he doesn't want to condemn the rally of the Unite the Right because many of them were wearing, um, what do you call it, uh, baseball caps with Make America Great Again. Maybe because many of them voted for him and he doesn't want to alienate some of the people who voted for him and he doesn't want to alienate maybe the silent, I won't say majority, but the silent large number of people who, while they're not going to go march 
for white supremacy. You're not going to go march with uh, with the Nazis. I kind of, at the margins, maybe a little sympathetic. I don't think that's a small group. I think that's a significant group. Some of them are on my YouTube feed right now. And he doesn't want to alienate them because they voted for him. Why? I, you know, because I, I really don't think Donald Trump, as Donald Trump, the person, is a racist or a bigot. I, I, I don't get that sense. I, I, I think Donald Trump is whatever he thinks will lead him to victory, to win. Right? I think Bannon is a bigot and a racist, but, uh, but also somebody who uses bigotry and racism to, to achieve an end. Uh, the end is what matters to both of them. But why won't he just say, I condemn neo-Nazis, I condemn white supremacists, and I condemn those who come to protest them if, when they come to protest them, they are intent on using violence. I condemn violence because even though the ideas of these people on the alt-right are despicable, are hateful, this is what the president should have said. They have a right to say it. And those, those on the left who would come to beat them up, they're no better. They're no better if what they have to do is be violent. Show some leadership. Defy, I mean, I don't need a philosophical statement. Okay, he's not going to make a philosophical statement. He, he, that's not him. That's not any president that we've seen in modern history, right? in modern memory. He's not going to come out and say, look, America's for individualism. We believe in the sanctity of the individual. We believe in the right to life, liberty, and pursuit of happiness for the individual. Two minutes. Anybody, anybody who marches for the sake of the collective, for the sake of a group, for the sake of the race, for the sake of whatever, a collective agenda, is anti-American and wrong, left or right, doesn't matter. I condemn them all and those, not only who march for these ideas, but then who are willing to raise a bat or a fist or use a car in violent ways to promote these ideas that is evil and that is where law and order will manifest itself. We will not tolerate this. We will not tolerate any violence. But he has to condemn the ideas. These are anti-American ideas. And they manifest in violence. Now this is a president who attacked Obama. 60. Attacked Obama for not being willing to call terrorism e radical Islamic terrorism. Attacked Obama for not having the courage to call it Islamic. Well, it's about time, Mr. President, that you had the courage to call these racists what they are. Call them out for the bigots that they are. Call them out for the racists that they are. Call them out for the anti-Americans that they are. And call out 30. the leftists who use violence to attack them or use violence to silence people. Call them out for the fascists that they are. You can't just single out Muslims. If we want to call out people, then let's call out people. Let's make it explicit and let's stand up for what America really values. Ten. What America's, what's really truly American, which is the sanctity of the individual. All right. Five, We're going for a break. Four, You're listening to Run Book Show. Three, we'll be right back. Two, one. Clear? You won't hear traditional political views here. Uh, I'm pretty sure you can't say the N word on the radio. Is the Iran Book Show? No. Is on it, the Blaze Radio seven? Network. I don't think it's one of the seven. I can't say the seven. So. <laughs>